Every city has something that distinguishes itself from the rest. An attribute that highlights its unique qualities. Perhaps it's a tourist attraction. Or the local university. The birthplace of an American favorite. Or maybe it's the people. For Waco, it seems like all of these qualities shared a role in making the city what it is today. Founded in 1849, Waco has become a sort of diamond in the rough in the state of Texas. However, until recent years, the city has been, for the most part, a drive-through town. A mere pit stop between Austin and Dallas, and definitely not known for its great first impressions. My first impression of Waco would be um, uh, lots of construction. It was very empty. Um, I didn't think I was going to like the school, so I was kind of like, yeah. Old, uh, kind of rustic. It's uh, it's a college town. It's really It really is friendly. It's got a lot of nice people. It's, it's welcoming. Uh, and it's a pretty town, minus, you know, the construction. It's really been neat getting to know Waco more, um, just kind of learning about the different parts of it that make Waco what it is. While Waco has experienced its fair share of tourism traffic, as well as construction-related traffic in the past couple of years, the one thing that consistently attracts new people is the nearby educational institution, Baylor University. Established in 1845, Baylor remains the focal point of the city of Waco. Built along the banks of the Brazos River, the university actively creates an environment where students and faculty can feel a sense of community. Uh, honestly, I, I just liked it. I like the campus, I like the people, I like the community, and I like the university's beliefs. Um, I liked what they stood for, so um, I chose to come here. It was also a good distance away from home, good sports team, so seemed like a good choice. Uh, mine was kind of a calling type deal. As soon as I visited on campus, I knew it was where I needed to be, where I needed to continue growing um, academically and just as a person. So I had no hesitation when I applied here. I didn't actually apply anywhere else, and this is where I decided to go to school and um, wouldn't change my decision at all. It was just a great place. I could tell I really like like just overall the people that are in Baylor, the people that are in Waco. It's very nice and like the size, it's like, it's like living in a city still, but it's like a small town feel where you can like run into people that you know, just out and about. And I really like that like close knit community feel. I started coming to like football games and like Baylor activities because of my sister. So I just like grew up around Baylor culture. Baylor has a tremendous impact on the students who attend the university as well as the faculty who are employed by the university. However, does Baylor reflect the culture of the city of Waco itself? I say it's kind of different only because Waco is kind of, it has two sides to it and where Baylor is placed, it's placed in a side that is just um, not, it's not the best uh, economically, you know? They don't have the best housing and everything, but the other side of Waco is further away from Baylor. It has better housing, better school districts, and all that. Waco is the number one hiring institution in uh, Baylor, is the number one hiring institution in Waco. And so, like, it's kind of, I feel like, contradicting that most of the Waco population is living in poverty, like, or unemployed. Um, so, it kind of goes to show that most of the money that's coming through Baylor is simply for, like, the institution alone. Everything kind of feels like Baylor, even like in the surrounding area around yeah. campus. But going into Waco, I can see how there's a lot of differences. Yeah. I can see, especially with like, you know, Baylor, typical Baylor student is, you know, comes from a pretty wealthy background of some sort, not necessarily, you know, Jeff Bezos, but like well off. And there's definitely some sections of Waco where there's some severe poverty. So you can definitely, there is cultural differences. Every college town exhibits differences between the school and the rest of the community. Those differences only leave room for improvement, which begs the question, do Baylor events have any impact on the local Wacoans' lives? Oh, major, major, everybody knows that. Uh, 
not even events, just Baylor being in school, period, even when summertime comes, like my business slows down when uh, students are not here. So Baylor definitely plays a major part in like the uh, economics. Football games, uh, definitely an increase in traffic and stuff like that. Um, and then it's probably a good revenue source for food and restaurants kind of supporting businesses. I know um, some people that I've met, like coworkers that live in Waco, um, they, it's just, it's just normal for them that Baylor events are going on. They don't go to the Baylor events all the time. It's just kind of like a part of life for them. It's like a given. And so I wanted to say that like, oh, Baylor events are like the key centerpiece of everything that happens in Waco. But I do think that they add like a special aspect to just like having the Baylor influence that is here in Waco. It definitely has changed Waco in several ways. Even a school rich in history and spirit can only contribute so much to a city's overall growth. Chip and Joanna Gaines, two Baylor alumni, have made a massive mark on Waco in the past couple of years. After graduating from Baylor, Chip and Joe established Magnolia, a media and merchandising empire headquartered in Waco. Their success has made the city one of the most popular tourist destinations in Texas. Many people outside of Waco attribute its growth to Chip and Joe. As for the locals and the students, I think they have a big part. I don't feel like them alone, but I do feel like they play a major part. They were a major piece to the puzzle because I feel like a lot of people looked at them and was like, yo, if they can do it, we can do it. And I feel like everyone's now trying to do something in Waco, which is bringing more people to Waco. In a lot of ways, I would say so. I think um, they're responsible for a lot of tourism. People that would yeah. never have even heard of Waco in the first place have come here, have moved here, come to uh, you know see what Waco's all about. Maybe not everything it's painted to be on uh, HGTV, but I definitely think they have contributed to a, a vast majority of the growth in Waco. I like the fact that they bring like food trucks and support local businesses. I do think that they've helped a lot, um, just kind of putting it on the map as a kind of a tourist stop on the on I-35 going through Texas. The growth of smaller cities definitely has its benefits, but these changes can overshadow the things that made these towns unique. Is Waco currently in a phase of gentrification? I hate that question. Uh, I, the reason I hate that question is because I feel like I haven't did my research on what true gentrification really is. Uh, but. Is it being made new? Yes. Even during a pandemic, it seems that there is more happening in Waco than people think. But does this also apply to Waco's nightlife? Number one spot. So for bars and stuff, you gotta be 21 in most of them, and like parties aren't a thing really. It's just like small gatherings, of less than 10 people, of course. Yeah, so I like coaches a lot. And I do too. Yeah, there's, there's a couple there's good a bars. Decent amount there's, of nightlife. You know, you know, I mean, there's, there's more. There's more than people think. Yeah, Baylor's always also got something going on. Sports games. Things yeah, like that. yeah for sure, so. for sure. Where where Baylor lacks in nightlife compared to like a you know Tech College Station mm -hmm. type of deal. Yeah, I would definitely have a lot of great academic events and stuff to do on campus, so. So maybe Waco isn't known to have much of a nightlife, but it is known for being the home of a particular soft drink that has become an American favorite, Dr. Pepper. As one of Waco's staples, it is ingrained in the city's culture. I like Dr. Pepper. Okay. Yeah, if I was to drink soda, I would choose Dr. Pepper. Uh, if I was to choose a dark, if I would probably choose like Big Red or Sprite or something like that, but yeah, dark, I would go with Dr. Pepper. Oh, big fan. Definitely best drink out there. Never gonna change. Love it. It's my favorite drink. Yeah, favorite soda. 
I'm not a fan. It's overrated. It's it is overrated. overrated. I can drink it. I don't like that. I, I agree. I don't I like it. it. It's not like I'm like, you know, hey, Dr. Pepper, but it's not like amazing. It's not even my favorite. It's never my first choice. It's, yeah, it's never my first if choice. It's, yeah, I'll it, which is a super like untexted thing to say. Like, yeah. I feel like we're supposed to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. but it's, it's overrated. I mean, it's okay. Like, it's not. If someone handed it to me and I was thirsty enough, I would drink it. Okay, to be honest, Dr. Pepper tastes the same as Coke to me. Well, everyone is entitled to their opinion. We've seen how Waco has grown in recent years due to tourist attractions and Baylor's presence, but can this growth be sustained or will Waco's expansion eventually come to a halt? 10 years, uh, I think it's gonna be more developed um, just with um, construction and stuff like that. It'll probably be closer to finished. I feel like in the next 10 years, Waco will still continue to grow like it has been lately. I think it'll hopefully not grow too, too much and lose that small town feel like I talked about. But I do think it's definitely going to be on the up and coming um, kind of trend. It should be like a bigger city, especially because they're building and expanding um, everything that uh, is in Waco now, so it should be, I would love to come back and take it, so. Definitely Waco will be a lot more uh, busier, I feel like. I feel like a lot more people gonna move here. Uh, you see houses being built or remodeled, new businesses popping up everywhere. Uh, in 10 years, I definitely feel like it's gonna be a lot more busy than it is now. While it isn't quite on the level of Dallas or Austin in terms of popularity, Waco is definitely making a name for itself. Small towns that are rich in character aren't all that common these days. As Waco continues on its current trajectory, it's important to acknowledge what's here before it's gone. Who knows what the future holds for this city? A couple of high-rise apartment buildings? a professional sports team, maybe even another university. Regardless of what comes next, Waco is clearly enjoying a season of rebirth. <laughs>